Let me show you how to tune up your slot car's speed, brakes, handling, and code it to a pace car. Coming up next! Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Ursulescu, and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. So thank you all for watching all my slot car videos over the years. And uh, I get quite a lot of questions down there in the comments below. So I'm going to try to make a new video here that's going to show you something new <laughs> that's part of your questions. So it's again to deal with controllers, but this time it's actually going to be about setting up your slot cars. So let's go down to our track and check it out. So here we are at trackside, and we've got our digital setup all ready to go. And we've got our control center, and of course our track and our four lanes and all the rest. And we've got our slot car here, my number 74 Porsche. And now I'm just going to assume that you guys have just opened this up out of the box. You bought one of our sets or found us online and built something. Um, let's just say you built Zonda, right? because that's the track I got set up. So you have it all here, and this is your first time ever using this, and you're like, well, how do I set up my cars and my controllers, and I've got this problem with this, and then what's going on with that? Okay, so first things first, we got all the controllers back here, and I've got them all numbered one to six, and this is my number one. Now, we're gonna take a look at setting up our controllers to our digital receiver right here. So here's your wireless plus receiver and you'll note that the cursor is going around in this little circle pattern and you'll also see a red button here and you're thinking to yourself well what does this mean well here's your controller and you'll notice there's a, a red light that's the indicator that it's on and charged and you'll also notice this green button here a uh, black button pardon me right there so what you do is you click the red button and all of a sudden it'll go and say like number one and then what you'll do is you'll push the black button and then see the light will come on and then it'll go back to the spiral so that means that this controller is now controller number one now if you want to set up your next controller you click to the number two and then you push this and now this one is controller two but actually this controller here is controller one for me on my track and this one is three so I'm just gonna set this to three and there now your controllers are um, hooked up to your wireless receiver and of course I've got six so this will go all the way up to six controllers and that's all the system can handle is just six so you want to code all your controllers up to number six so I'm gonna let you do that and we will move on to control um, tuning the cars to the controllers all right so now we want to code our cars to our controller now as a rule of thumb this is my controller number one all your slot cars come from the factory set up for controller number one here's another one of the slot cars and as you can see it is also hooked up to controller number one so now here's a problem you've got two cars you just bought and they're both hooked to controller number one so we want to change this and have one car hooked up to controller one and another one hooked up to controller number two so how do we do that well first thing is first you have to figure out which car of yours you want as controller one and controller two so let's tear in our beetle into a controller two car so we have to take this one off the track any cars that are going to be on the track if they're on are going to be um, accidentally coded to controller one or controller 2 or whatever controller you're using so get every car off except for the one you want to be coded to a different controller so what you do then is right here on your uh, control panel is a 
button that says code. So you push that once and that light will come on. Then with your red action button in the front, you just push it in. Now your car, the headlights are flashing and it's hooked up to controller two. So now if I push this, your throttle, only the Volkswagen Beetle will go. There you go. You successfully now coded your other car to a different controller. And it doesn't matter what controller you're using as long as you push code and push that button in. So now we're going to look at making our car into a ghost car. All right, so I've set up this track at this really far angle so you can see this part um, of how the car goes. So if you want to turn your car into a ghost car, there's sort of two steps to this. First off is you push the code button twice. So one, two. Okay, now you're in the ghost car mode. So what happens here is you've got your controller. You're going to push the red button once to tell the system that you're going to start your car up. Okay. And then, okay, it'll beep. Now, the headlights are flashing, so you want to hold your controller down, and you're using your throttle to code the car as to how fast it's going to go on this track. So when you think you're comfortable and your car's not going to wipe out, you're going to push the red button again and now the car is locked in so you can see it going around in the background it's its own ghost car now it's running under its own power and you're not controlling it so now the reason why you want to set up the ghost car is you can use it like I do sometimes when I'm filming so that I can film and my car is still running or you can also set it up as a uh, lap car so if you want to test your speeds with your other car, like my car number one, I can now put it on and race it under my own power and try to catch my ghost car. And now there's one thing to keep in mind. Your ghost car is always going to be on, no matter what you do. So let's just stop the track for a sec actually okay so I'm starting it again and you'll notice the ghost car will go right away and there it is so now <laughs> if you're racing as a ghost car with six other drivers always set your car right against the start finish position never have a ghost car like this so here you are at the start finish gate and the race is about ready to begin and you've got your pace car sitting right there behind or sorry your ghost car sitting right there behind your your uh, other car. So here's the problem with this. That's the problem. <laughs> In case you missed that the ghost or the pace car the ghost car will always start first it doesn't have a thumb or actuator sitting there to push it down and waiting for a signal its signal is all ready to go as soon as you start finish gate walks through your car is activated so if it's behind somebody it's going to rear end them in a hurry before the other guy can even get it in his mind that this light just went off and now he's got to push his thumb down. So you always want to have your ghost car in the lead. All right, so the third feature in your under your code button is to set your car up as a pace car. But this is only useful if you have the pit lane, which we don't, but I'm going to run through the theory of it anyway. So I kind of made a mistake uh, in my references. So if you push code once, you're actually coding your car to your controller. If you push it twice, you're doing the pace or the ghost car setting, which I just demonstrated. And if you push it three times, you're now setting it up for the pace car. Now this is to tell the chip inside the car, the computer chip, to do a certain function. So in order to set this up, this is very much like your 
ghost car. You push a button once. Okay. And you can hear the motor grinding there, telling you it's ready. And now you're, you're going to hold your button in, and you're going to get that ideal setting where you're not going to run off the curves. And then you lock it down again with your red button. So now it's set up as a pace car. So what it is doing right now, is it is looking for the pit lane. And when it finds a pit lane, it will grind, ground itself in the pit lane, waiting for your next command. So I'm just going to stop it here for a minute. Okay, we're pretending that this is set up for its pit lane. Okay. So it's waiting there. It's got its lights indicating. Now what happens is it'll be sitting there waiting. If one of your cars comes off the track, you can press this button and it will call for the pace car. And what happens is it comes out of the start or the pit lane and it'll come onto the track and it'll go around and let all the other drivers know that uh, a car is off the track and to either drive at half your speed or wait until the guy puts his car back on. Now I don't have a pace car in the store, but you can find them at the Carrera website and they've got the light bars on the top. They're usually a police car or something like that. And that's what its purpose is. So the next thing we're going to look at is setting the speed and the brakes. And now I'm, I've coded my Porsche here to controller number one. Now this is very easy again. So let's say out of the factory, all the cars speeds will be right up full, full blast. Okay. So now let's say you want your speed like that. So you push your button. Oops, sorry. You push your enter button. And now with that going over there, that's telling you that this car is now coded at full speed inside the, the digital chip. But let's say you don't want that. Let's say you've got a birthday party coming up and it's going to be 10 year old kids. And you know, if they, they're going to, they're going to do this all the way. Now I put my hand there so the car wouldn't fly off the track. But yeah, five-year-old kid goes like this. They have no concept of, okay, you got to drive like this, nice and slow, and then you got to straight away, so you put the hammer down, now you come to a break, and you got to let up. And all, they don't understand that. So they just go, eh, look at me go, right? So you don't want the kids to torch your cars to death and shoot them into the wall. So what you do is you set your speed. Now you push the button there. Now you're at the slowest setting. Um, let's just do this one. Okay, so now the kid's going to gun it down, and, I mean, look at how slow your car's going. You know, barely a crawl. Now, usually when I code for birthday parties and stuff like that at the store, I will go to there, halfway. And I find this is usually a good speed, so even if the kids push down... They can't go too far off. So the next button on the, our control here is called the brake. Now, much like the speed setting, this will set your brakes. So all cars again out of the factory are coming at full braking. And it's always enter with the speed and the brake. Now what happens is, as soon as you let go of your trigger, your car comes to a dead full-on brake stop. Now that's that's good for the young kids and whatnot, but if you want to control your brakes, it's very much like the speed setting. So now here, if we push enter, your car will stop, but it'll ride a long way. So I'm just going to back the camera up so we can see this on the long track. So now we're going to see the distance this car travels before its brakes go on when it's at the lowest brake setting. Stopping. Okay, as you can see, it kind of went quite a bit. Let's actually move the camera here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop right at this crossing. So that's how far it goes. 
it's almost like three or four track lengths before it stops. So I'm going to change the setting here and uh, we'll see the difference. Okay, I've altered the brake setting to one half and I'm going to stop, bring the car around and I'm going to stop it right at the camera and then it'll drift right past the lens. So here we go. So I don't know if you can tell this, but this should be half the distance. There you go. That's about half the distance with the brakes at half. And now I'm going to show you at full stopping power. And here's the brakes at full power. And <laughs> there. So there's no drift or roll with it at full power. So the question is, why do you want your brakes at different levels? Well, it's to help you when you navigate around the, the curves. If your brakes are right full tight and you stop, you will come to a dead stop, of course. But usually I put mine at halfway so that I can actually drift around a corner. And then when I'm halfway through the curve, push the throttle down and give it more speed to get out of the curve. And that's more of a professional driving technique. So now I'm going to go through our final setting. And this again is one of those ones where you need the pit lane and you need one of the fuel counters that Carrera sells. So if you have that, you would push your fuel button. And again, much like this, it will tell you, you know, how much fuel your car can take. So you could set it to really low so that you're constantly on the verge of running out of fuel or set it to really high as if you had like a really huge gas tank in your car. So once you have that together again you press enter and now your car's got that kind of fuel capacity. So here's three settings off, on, and then real. So of course you would turn it to on. So your car will run around the track and it'll eventually run out of fuel. And when it does, the lights will start flashing. And then you need to pull into your pit lane and it will refuel on the same electric eye principle. So you're turning on your fuel into your car by turning this on. Now when you switch to real... Oh, so there's no actual dynamics. You're just running out of gas, basically. Now if you flip it to real then your car takes on characteristics. So when it is at a full tank, it'll drive a bit slower. When you get to half a tank, your car will start to go faster because it's getting lighter in its fuel carrying capacity. And then when you're about to run out of gas, your car will uh, go start going slower because it's running out of fuel. So that's sort of the real-world dynamics that Carrera put in here. Now we don't have the fuel set up here, so I'm just going to switch that to off so my car will run normally. And now this basically has now set up your entire system so you know how all this works. Well, we hope you found this video very, very helpful on learning all the secrets of your Carrera digital control unit. And now if you would like to know more about us, visit our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca and if you'd like to see how our controllers work, click up here. If you'd like to see how to tune up your slot car, click over here. And if you would want to watch one of our races, click down here and please subscribe to us right here so we can make you some better videos like this one. And we will see you at Slot Car Race Night.